puck to the front here off the board by Tabor. Right back in the attack, looking to hop out to their third win so far. Sierra. And right now they're doing well on that front. Cox got in the way the puck, Sam Seibel, the only goal scorer for St. Paul's, gives it back to Cade Cox, who will shoot it up the ice. Uh, I also have the Avon Old Farms game on right now. Trying to check the score on that one. They're playing Berkshire over at Jennings Fairchild Arena. It's probably ruining the quality of my stream watching their stream. Uh, I know that the uh, rink is a bit dark. And I apologize for that. I'm going to try to do the best I can. It's just uh, a bit challenging with the lighting here at Tabor. It, it's actually not really me. The uh, big ventilation tube that's right in front of us kind of blocks out the, the lighting. Trying to see if the zoom adjusts that, but it doesn't really. <laughs> Turn back here by St. Paul's. They need some quick goals. And maybe that man can provide a something, but JT couldn't really get to the inside there. He lays a good check. St. Paul's trying to track down Tabor in the neutral zone right now. As it shot into the far corner, Aiden Brenner. He's there for it. Comes around to the near side now. Pinching in from the line there, Xavier Valencourt. Valencourt gets the puck back, or really just pass was in front of him. He never actually got it back. Brenner at the line. In along the goal line. Back of the goal now. Valencourt. Allen found him. Valencourt back to the line. The pass was cut off there by a stepping up Brad Cox. And it's cleared under the stick of Matthew McGee. Back in come the Seawolves. Josh Eitree takes a hit. Tabor is offside. Valencourt still pursuing the puck. And now the officials after long warning the Seawolves will blow this one dead. And the faceoff should be... Uh, if I remember correctly, all the way down, but I'm not sure. We're just going to have it outside the St. Paul's end, where they usually have offsides, so maybe I'm not remembering correctly. It wasn't an intentional offside. And I'm pretty sure intentional offsides, they put it back in the team's defensive zone. Good pass there by Bohan, and then it's knocked in by Matt Grady. Axel Valencourt steps back with it, but it's turned over on the wall. Sent to the foot by St. Paul. In the area there was Dylan Biggs. He could get a stick on the rebound, and Tabor was able to clear rather quickly. Cade Cox with a bit of a stutter step. It's going to be a penalty to Tabor. A high stick in the neutral zone by Josh Eitree. I'm actually not sure if he was in the neutral zone, but that's where... I should be skating from. And we have the first Tabor penalty of the game. St. Paul's took one. Uh, and Tabor was unable to score, but it's led to three quick goals right after. St. Paul's, on the other hand, has not had a power play, and they've not had a power play goal all season. They're 0 for 14, I believe. They win the face off here. It would be a big one if they could get back into this game with a power play goal. They're working around the outside. Cox, Seibold, puck jumped over his stick. Allen is there, and he will clear it, and it gets by. And here comes Ryan Green, right in on goal. Ryan Green to the net, one stop, rebound. He got a second shot, too. And Welch shut that down. Green never really getting a good shot on goal. I think he didn't really make a decision there. I think he was going to try to track over to the near post, hold on to the puck, and try to wait out Welch, but he ended up shooting it. It didn't really look like he chose either with conviction. Terry finds the puck on the wall. St. Paul's back into the offensive zone. They made a couple of changes here. A minute left to go in the power play. Roberts reverses into the corner. That's Seibold. Seibold this way. Bryce Terry. Terry looking and stopping. And oh, it jumped over the stick of Brad Cox at the line and out. Well, that'll kill St. Paul's just for a little bit. They're back into the zone here. Seibold trying to drive to the inside. Seibold in front. There's a shot by Roberts, and he scores. A power play goal there, first of the season. And it's the first career goal for Jack Roberts in a St. Paul's uniform. St. Paul's gets back to within three. It's five to two. So we'll see if St. Paul's can 
builds a little momentum off of that. There's still 21 minutes left to go in the hockey game. Roberts was just inside the bottom of the circle, and he had good short range in front of Gus Ackerman, who hasn't seen much action tonight. He only has, saw 10 shots in the first. Saber outshot St. Paul's 21-10 in that period. And I don't know if that was the first shot he'd seen this period or what, but that one beat him five hole, I think, again. Knocked out to center, Halliday, can he win the puck? He does, he's in a break. JT Halliday chasing, and he had Ackerman sliding away. Now V with a shot, puck gets loose on the top of the yellow paint. And Ong had one too, but it's kept out of there by Ackerman to the round of applause by the Tabor fans in attendance. Good chance there by St. Paul's. Trying to get themselves back into this one. It's all about what can galvanize this St. Paul's team. Axel Valencourt gets it in. Oh, nearly turned around at the side, but knocked down before he was able to shoot with Johnson. The other way comes Misho. I do recommend, by the way, in terms of the darkness thing, uh, if you don't have your brightness all the way up on your computer, I recommend turning it all the way up. <laughs> That's my my recommendation. I just turn the brightness up on mine, and it looks better. There's a shot right in the glove of Welch. Plenty of traffic in front. Gonna make a really good save on Jason Zachary. Some out of town scores here for you. Games this morning at the Avon Old Farms Christmas Classic. Uh, Gunnery played Kent. They beat them 3-1. to one. That was on the sheet right in front of us here. And Loomis played Trinity Pauling at Jennings Fair Child Rink. And Loomis beat TP 3-1. to one. So two 3-1 scores here at the Christmas Classic. At the Flower Mud. Oh, Flower Mud. <laughs> Flood Mar Tournament. Hosted by Milton and Hotchkiss. Another great tradition. Hold on a moment. Here comes Roberts, the goal scorer. Jack Roberts leaves it off. Terry was on his backhand and was chased away from the puck there by Roberto. So no shot for St. Paul's even on a fast-moving two-on-one. Tabor comes the other way. At the Flood Mar Tournament, Milton stormed Hotchkiss by a 7-1 score. And Kimball Union, that was the 9 a.m. game. Then Kimball Union was leading Westminster 2-0 in the first period. That was the 11 a.m. game that's going on right now. There's another stoppage here at the Nets off its moorings. At uh, Jennings Fairchild Rink at Avon, Berkshire is playing Avon, and I'm not sure of the score of that one. They didn't have a scoreboard displayed or on the uh, Avon live stream. Yeah, I just didn't catch sight of it. Shot in here by Tabor, who leads by three goals. A power play marker here by Jack Roberts. His first in a St. Paul's uniform. Has brought St. Paul's back to within three, and they're playing with a bit more speed. Time is certainly not working in their favor. Tabor came into the period with a four-goal cushion, leading five to one. I haven't seen Josh Holiday much in this game, I feel like. This will be icing against Tabor, and I don't know if I'm missing something or if he is hurt. Let's see, five guys on the ice, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine on the bench. That's 16 skaters. Right? Nine plus five? No, it's that's not. That's fourteen. Don't do math on air, folks. <laughs> My consistently running joke. Yeah, and I don't see him on the bench, so I don't know if he got hurt early in the game or what. But that takes St. Paul's down another player. 
and he's been banged up coming into the zone of Allen. That is part of the reason why these games, which are a war of attrition to an extent with the 25-minute halves, uh, have been so challenging for St. Paul's because they are so short-handed. Here comes Ryan Green into the zone. Chopped in behind the net. Cade Cox will play it around. Luke Pineda was back there. Pineda for Sullivan. I don't know why it took me a while to just notice that one. I apologize if I haven't. I can't see if he's up there in the in the balcony or not. It's left back to the line here. Axel Ballon caught the shot, and it just went high and wide of the goal. This one rattles up and around the glass. Cade Cox was there. It goes over to the far side. Matt Grady. He's pinned to the boards there by Sam Berry. Cox digs it free. He's all by himself, but gets it over the red line and glides one in. St. Paul's hustling for a change. Hey, Revenge calling for a quick up there by Jenkins, but instead he's going to take it for a skate. Jenkins to Brant left side. Jenkins driving the goal. Brant waits. He's at the circle. Takes the shot, and it was stopped by Welch. Most of the other games that are going on around prep hockey don't really kick off till the afternoon. Only the Flood Mar and the Avon Old Farms Christmas Classic playing morning games today. Other tournaments in action. Groton Lawrence tournament begins at 3. The Kevin Much Christmas Cup at St. Sebastian's begins at 2. The Lawrenceville Invitational begins at 1 o'clock. The longest running uh, prep school hockey holiday tournament. The Brooks Pingree tournament begins at 4.15 and the William J. Barber tournament at uh, Middlesex begins at 5. Rotten Lawrence also began yesterday. So it'll be the second day of the Groton Lawrence tournament, but today's action begins at 3. That's what I meant. It's a great time to be a prep hockey fan. Always a lot of fun. We're down to 15.45 left to go. Ten minutes gone. And St. Paul is still trailing by three. They need another one fast if they look to get back in it. Jack Roberts trying to provide. He'll go over the far side. Fending off Carter Patterson. He goes into the boards. Patterson took care of him well. Tabor will round the goal now and come out. Keenan Dewberry gets it in. It goes quickly around. Seibold missing Roberts there. This will be all the way down the ice. And icing against St. Paul's. And they just had a wholesale line change. So they're going to have to get everybody back on the ice. It's off to the right here of Welch and Valancourt digs in for Tabor. Valancourt pushed it past Bryce Terry, who was in the middle dot for St. Paul's. Shot from the line is stopped by Welch there. Tabor's certainly not playing with the same intensity. They will move on to play Avon at 9 p.m. And I mean, if you're a believer in the fact that you only have so much intensity to give, maybe it's good to save it for that one because it'll be a doozy. If this result holds, both teams will... Well, actually, I shouldn't say that. I don't know the score of the Avon Berkshire game. If this was all holds, Tabor will go in 2-0. Avon, if they beat Berkshire, will be 2-0 in that. Game will decide who will play in the championship tomorrow against the winner of the Pierpont Division. Or Troutman Division. I think this is the Pierpont Division. Doesn't really matter. It's the other division. That's the point. Oh, turnover back to the goal. Halliday and the shot at the side post there. And he was knocked over. As he had the shot, Allen looked out a lot, just a lot of confusion around the Tabor goal there. Halliday was knocked over, got up, the puck found him. He tried to come out in front of it, couldn't get a good shot off though. Turned over in back of the goal by Ackerman, that started the whole play. Lofts it out to Henry Ong, he's got Cade Cox with him, they're close to being offside, the Tabor bench certainly thought so, and they might have a point. 
Cox, a little reverse pass, ping-pongs its way to Michaud. He tried to lean into a shot, but it was blocked by Cole Esty. Coming through neutral ice here is Johnson. The pass, or the shot rather, goes wide of the St. Paul's goal. Tabor player took a hard digger over there on the left wall. It wasn't even that he got knocked out, he fell. That was Valancourt. He just went down with a bang. Got up right away, though. A Quebec native that played at Selects Academy last year, Xavier Valancourt. Johnson. He gets hit hard by Dylan Biggs in front of the scorer's table. Pops back up too, though. Brad couldn't clear the zone in there on the far side. Turned to the middle. There's a Patterson drive. And out of the top of his crease to meet it with Welch. A good save from the St. Paul's goaltender. I don't think St. Paul's has had a shot. Maybe two. Since getting the goal from Roberts. If you remember, they nearly went up 2-0 after going up 1-0 early on the Sam Seibel goal. He nearly had a breakaway. I think Halliday had a breakaway after the Roberts goal, too. Neither chance came to fruition. They were playing it around. Here's Jenkins centering pass. It was a hot one for Brant, and it jumped over his stick. He would have been all alone in between the hashes. The deflection was not hard enough there by Terry. Left by Patterson. Jenkins to the back door. Brant actually kicks out in the middle. The pass was intended for the Russo on the far side. And Paul gets it out by himself here. Jack Roberts, he just chucks it away. Stepping up on it, Bohan. He's got Vio going to the goal. There's Lino on his backhand. He's trying to tuck it in on the near post. Ackerman made a good save there. Look behind him. Vio dodges the check. Seibold comes into the zone. He centered it in front for Halliday. And JT couldn't get a good stick on it. He'll go chasing for it in the corner now. But Kai Roberto did a very good job of dodging him. 11.32 left to play. This puck going to go all the way down the ice. Cal Welch's arm is up. And it's icing against Tabor. Jenkins line is going to come back on the ice. They've been on the ice for a while. Yes, this is the Pierpont division. I just checked. St. Paul's goes on to play Berkshire tonight at 7 o'clock. We'll be back at Jennings Fairchild Drink for that one. Berkshire, another team of not as big a roster. Most of these games, St. Paul's is heavily outmanned. Yeah, Josh Holiday is up in the press box, so I don't know how he got hurt. I didn't see it. But he's hurt or out of this game in some way, shape, or form. That's a tough loss for St. Paul's. This goal's already hard to come by. by rolling in on Cal Welch. And he'll make the save. Game's just taking on a little bit of a nothing burger sense here the last couple of minutes with both teams kind of biding their time just a bit. Some sloppy hockey here. Everyone in below the hash marks. The shot comes through from Esty. It was loose there. And fanned upon between the circles by Tabor. Not sure who the player was in there. Here's Brady finding it. Matt Brady, the pass went off an ankle. And turning it the other way here, Xavier Valencourt. We go deep into the St. Paul's end. Sullivan is hooked. I'm surprised there wasn't a penalty on that one. That was the NHL. It would have been a hooking penalty, but the NHL is really hard on the hooking penalties. And I'm not going to say I'm a huge fan of that. So I don't really think it should have been a hooking penalty, but 
<laughs> in the NHL, if you have your stick on the hands of a guy, it's basically a penalty. But this is not the NHL, in case you were wondering. <laughs> Brad just flips it ahead. It's going to be a turnover. A turned over right back by James Luo there. Shot off the wing. And a good heavy one there by Jack Roberts. But his blocker to side. Pushed up to the blue line and out by Tabor. Fanned on by Brad. And the other way, here comes Luo. Luo right wing side. He waits before shooting. And Welch made the save. It was a three on one. But St. Paul did a good job of taking the shot away. Or pass away, rather. Not sure who the defender was there. That didn't hit the rafters. That was way up by Roberts and his glove down by Seibold. I'm surprised that didn't hit the roof. Avon Old Farms Christmas Classic. Kent off to a good start. They're 2-0. They have the second most championships here at the Christmas Classic with five. Bet you can guess who has the first most as Halliday coming up the right side here. JT with the shot and he's going 5 old again, but Ackerman shuts the door this time. Bet you can guess who has the most. Avon has 21 championships at their own tournament. A uh, impressive margin to say the least. <laughs> the next best team has 5. How about that? Gunnery with 3. St. Paul's with 3 and Tabor with 3. Gunnery won the uh, last one, beating Kent, actually. They had the chance for JT Halliday coming up the left side. He's on his backhand and scores! So after some back and forth, willy-nilly, nothing really going on, JT Halliday gets his first goal of the year in his second game of the year. And St. Paul's, with eight minutes left to play, has pulled back to within two. That was a laser beam of a backhander. And they're very slowly clawing their way back. Down two goals with eight minutes. It was, it was looking like right, goals hard to come by for the St. Paul's team. Down three, 10 minutes to go. And not much going on in the hockey game. This will be icing against Tabor. A very close race, but Brad Cox and Jake Sullivan won it. And it's like, okay, like, Perhaps this one is going to fall by the wayside again. And there's not really much going on in the game. And I'm starting to dig into the notes about the Christmas classic history. Like, But now you're looking at the clock. It's a two-goal game with eight minutes left. 7.42 uh, to be exact. And you say, okay. Maybe we got ourselves a hockey game here. We'll see what St. Paul's can do. In the next seven and a half minutes, we'll see what Tabor can do too. I don't think they're going to... Be content just to sit back and defend. This one will be in on Welch, so it won't be icing. They're going to try to pot one or two themselves and put this game back out of reach. Here comes Matt Grady on the right side. St. Paul's three attackers ahead of the play. Couldn't really get much done. Kai Roberto has it back for Tabor. They move it crisply this way. And Zachary comes in. Two one. Seawolves charging down the middle, but the... Shot off the wall just goes low and in on Zachary without a tip or anything like that. We get a stoppage here. Seven minutes left. As in the St. Paul's end. You feel just a little bit more energy pop back onto the St. Paul's bench too. Loose puck in front and a great save there by Welch. The shot from Alec O'Connor. A Winchester, Massachusetts boy who went off the leg and redirected sharply. Well, tried to make a really good save there. A reaction save. O'Connor able to keep it at the line. And St. Paul's just about cleared the zone there, trying to go the other way, but nobody could pick it off. Could have been a chance for Tabor. Nothing really became of it. St. Paul's back in defensive formation, I guess. Seibold into the middle looking for Roberts. Try to split the seam. He couldn't. Six and a half left. Two goal game. Five three. 
St. Paul's and Tabor. Tabor led 5-1 here. The turnover under the stick of Allen. Allen had to make a move. He's got it back in the corner. Comes back towards the middle of the ice with a shot. Rebound was there. Welch holding his post. Where's the pocket? Comes to the corner. And Seibold has a look. He sees Roberts ahead. It's a 2-1-2. Two -two. And here come the Big Red. They're tired and are changing behind the play as Sam Seibold comes the other way. Seibold defended well. He had the stick dragged away from him. So you could never go in on the forecheck there. Close to being interference. Not called. And Tabor comes back the other way. St. Paul's has a window. Tabor trying to slam it shut. And they do good work on the wall to keep the puck there. Patterson. The Holy Cross commit coming around the goal. Drops it back for Jack Brandt, his line mate. The top line out there for Tabor right now. Looking to pin St. Paul's in their own end and really just wear away the clock. Of course, they'd love a goal too. Here's DeRusso with the circle, dribbling around. Brandt, back door. That's Jenkins, stopped by Welch. And he's got it underneath his glove. I don't think Coleman got the shot he really wanted. In front of that, he was falling. I don't think Brant really got the look he wanted either. The puck is bouncing on him. It's maybe some fortunate puck luck. If you're St. Paul's, that line will come off. Those two guys are dangerous in around the goal. All had the puck but couldn't clear it off the face off. Sullivan wheels back with it. Sullivan for Cox. Little backhander up the wall. Cox now flips it to the middle. All can't clear. Tabor's pinning. St. Paul's in their own end since that goal. They're trying to shut the door here. St. Paul's needs two to tie. The goals have been hard to come by, as I mentioned. Sullivan, the long stretcher. St. Paul's has it in neutral territory. Halliday's coming. Here's JT with a shot, and it was stopped by Ackerman. He had Veal with him on the rush. I think JT probably had a bit more time and space than he thought there. St. Paul's gets a chance out of a time long spent in the offensive zone. Face off. Yee, that puck bounced off of Grady. And it only redirected really a little bit. Ackerman just reaches out the glove and gets it. Face off to the left of Gus Ackerman. 4.57 to play. St. Paul's wins it. That's Brad Cox's shot. It was blocked aside. And that'll draw some cheers from the bench. But Big steals it back for St. Paul's and dumps it in. Misho up there in the forecheck. St. Paul's skating a little better here since the holiday goal. Skating with a bit more tenacity in the offensive zone at least. Grady was dumped there. St. Paul's looking for a penalty. None forthcoming. Really just Sam Simon to the bench. He had his arm up. He was like, where's the call? You know, everyone knows that. Sick the arm up in the air. <laughs> I don't think much of the rest of the bench can see it. Cox will glass it. And Tabor forced to regroup right now. St. Paul's going to try to force a quick change in. Sent to the front by Brant. Knocked down by Yee. And the other way, here comes Jack Roberts in a one-on-one -on -one with Allen. Roberts with a shot. And ooh, Ackerman had a look behind him. Real nice hand-eye coordination there by Christian Yee to knock that puck down and he started a chance. Got off the outside of the post there from in low. Seibold's trying to center it off the outside of the net there for Terry and nearly succeeded in doing so. Tap behind the goal in center, but right onto the stick of Roberts. He'll lead the rush for St. Paul's, Jack Roberts. Chips it around a man. They'll go into the quarter for it. Roberts rubs them out. And they haven't been really calling that all day. So no interference call on that one either. But it'll, although in uh, some games it very much could have been. The Tabor bench wanted one. We have a two-goal hockey game with 3.30 left to play. St. Paul's needs two. They trail 5-3. to three. JT Holiday and Jack Roberts have goals in this half for St. Paul's. Welch plays it quickly. Time of the essence for the Big Red. Ong stretcher by Bohan finds Ong on the red line. Ong for Vio, chips it by. He's got Halliday going into the goal. Vio waits, looks, centers! And there were some shouts, and Ackerman, I think, waited the save. Halliday threw his hands up in the air. He thought he'd scored. And the referees are 
don't know if they're talking about it or what. I think the linesman was just having a chat there. Good chance for St. Paul's again. Villa with a nice centering pass for Halliday. And JT just couldn't knock it in. Behind Ackerman. He's had a good couple of shifts Halliday has. Patterson and deflected in. St. Paul's trying to make a push under three minutes left. The he had his man wrapped up and be careful not to take a penalty there. This one a lofty shot off the stick of Kai Roberto. Stopped by Welch. I know I'm a little bit delayed there on that uh, call. <laughs> Face off win for SPS in their own end. Back on it here is Esty. Tracked down there, but he did a good job of holding his own. Eventually lost the puck. De Russo, these guys will just dwindle away the time. Jenkins fending off of fending off every attacker within his reach. They're gonna hold it below the goal line. This is good play here from Tabor with under two minutes left. Esty at the line, rattles it right back onto the stick of Jenkins at the face-off circle. He coughed it up. Grady holding him off. St. Paul's will get it to the line. And now out. Pinato. Had to just jump over his stick. St. Paul's was changing. Here comes Brant. Brant, a lane save was made by Welch. 98 seconds to play. Brant's alone in the back door. Waits and finds a man. And it was shot off the goal post. Valancourt hit the post square. Good job by Brant to find him. Now a chance in front of the goal. And it's stopped by Welch. And then coming in well late was the Seawolf Brant. And Cal Welch comes out of his net not happy about it. As he had pretty firmly had that puck. 87 seconds to play. Goals by Roberts and JT Halliday have gotten St. Paul's back in this one, but trailing five to three. They're in danger of it not being enough. Well, they're quickly out to center here. Can Roberts get a shot? One minute, 20 seconds left. He can't get it to the front though. O'Connor, now it's centered back out the other way. Tabor finds it first, it's put off the glass. He can't hold it in, St. Paul's won't touch it, they're offside. He knocks it down, shovels it to the middle there with the glove. Terry played it back, St. Paul's was changing, and the net is empty. Conley Bohan, ooh, pass nearly telegraphed there. First empty net situation for St. Paul's of the season so far. 53 seconds left, they trail by two goals. And they put up a fight here in the second half, but time running thin. 40 seconds left. They can't really escape their own end right now. Sullivan doesn't have the time really to wait behind the goal there. Now he makes a quick pass. Seibold for Roberts right side. Jack Roberts with 30 seconds.